Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to the Crack of Pack series. Today we are opening up a pack of Conspiracy Take the Crown. This is the second edition of the Conspiracy set. Uh, I really liked both of these. They were a little underrated actually in my opinion, but they both had really, really great reprints as well as a few really, really good original cards. Things like Dak Faden were in the first one. Uh, so lots of really cool stuff. Uh, Kaya, I believe, was the big planeswalker in this one. Uh, so hopefully you get something interesting. There are also quite a number of really good reprints. Show and Tell, uh, Berserk is in here, uh, as well as a few others. Expropriate is a really great commander card as well. So, uh, of course, we're going to look at this from a limited perspective. This was a limited made set, uh, meaning it was really made to be drafted. Uh, and so there are actually some draft specific cards that we'll probably get to talk about while we go through this. Uh, but of course we'll try and figure out what our pack one pick one would actually be. So <clears throat> we start off with a fester gloom as our first common is a sorcery for two and a black non-black creatures get minus one minus one until end of turn. Uh, this is actually a pretty good sideboard card. There are definitely instances where you'll be able to exploit this if you are in a black deck. This is not a first pickable card by any means, but uh, if you are in a black deck and you have a little bit of an extra room, uh, maybe just you've got enough playables, that kind of a thing, this is definitely a card that I would be willing to pick up. Uh, you probably don't want to run it uh, in your main deck just because you might be against a black deck, in which case it is a completely dead card. But uh, that being said, obviously there are four other colors, so the likelihood is that you have something that you can hit with it. So I do like this card, pretty powerful. <laughs> Uh, Collar of Gales is a 1-1 one, one for 1 blue. Uh, you can pay 1 in a blue and tap it and target creature gains flying until end of turn. Uh, this is actually a pretty just serviceable 1 drop. It's pretty good. Uh, being able to give something flying is very similar to giving it unblockable in a lot of instances. And even if it's not completely unblockable, even if the, cre the opponent has a reach creature or something else with flying, uh, you're still probably going to be able to at least give yourself some favorable combat, uh, which definitely seems more, more appropriate. So uh, I actually like this card. I think it's quite a good one drop. Uh, not a reason or not a first pick uh, by any means, but it is pretty good. Uh, Hurley Burley is a sorcery for one and a red. Choose one, it deals one damage to each creature with flying, or it deals one damage to each creature uh, uh, without flying and then with flying. I misread, excuse me. Um, so either you're dealing one damage to every creature with flying or one damage without. Uh, this is a perfectly fine card. Uh, I think you'll most likely be able to find like a serviceable time to play this. Uh, for two mana, being able to deal one damage to either all creatures with flying or all creatures without seems pretty worth it. Uh, I don't know if it's really all that great though. I feel like there's better just targeted removal that will probably be a little bit more lucrative and hit more. Uh, so not super exciting, uh, unfortunately, but not terrible. Uh, Garrulous uh, Psychophant. I hope I am saying that correctly. Uh, it's a 1-4 for two and a black. At the beginning of your instep, if you're the monarch, uh, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Monarch is a mechanic that is specific to this set. Uh, I don't remember every like detail about the Monarch, but I do know uh, if you're attacked and dealt damage, somebody else becomes a Monarch and you can only become the Monarch uh, if a creature card like this uh, says that, or a creature card or some other kind of card says, okay, you are now the Monarch. So. Uh, it only comes into play after that's been the case, and then it can be stolen uh, back and forth based on damage. Uh, Monarch is a very, very good mechanic, though. Uh, this is the kind of card where, like, if you're going to play this, you want to be able to make sure that you're going to have the Monarch ability first. Uh, otherwise, it's really not worth it at all. But uh, also, you want to be able to keep the keep the monarch uh, a keyword ability, whatever, uh, for as long as possible. Which means you kind of want to be aggressive and be able to swing in and make sure that you can take it back if it is stolen from you. Uh, and so, I don't. I mean, I like this card. It's able if even even if it's draining for one or two life, I feel like it's probably worth it. But uh, I'd rather have the cards that say, "Hey, now you're the monarch first. Otherwise. This literally does nothing other than just sits on the field and blocks, which is not good. Uh, Lace with Moon Glove uh, is two and a green for an instant. Uh, target creature gains death touch until end of turn, and then you also draw a card. Uh, this is an okay combat trick. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it. Three mana combat tricks in general are a little bit like, maybe a little too high in my opinion. 
I do like that this replaces itself and this basically is a kill spell on a six. So I do think that this is worth running if you've got a high creature count, which again in limited you're probably going to have. Uh, and so I do like this for that reason. Um, it's basically a three mana removal spell is the way I would look at it. Uh, and then you're able to replace it, which does seem quite good. Uh, obviously you have to be swinging in or blocking uh, for this to actually mean anything at all. And so that's kind of the key behind this card. It's not going to be like, hey, I can just point and shoot anything. Well, that's not the case. So I like it. Not amazing, though. Uh, definitely not first pick. Uh, Zealous Strike is one and a white for an instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains first strike until end of turn. This, to me, seems like a much better combat trick. Uh, it's two mana, so it's a little bit cheaper, but uh, it also gives first strike, which means uh, it's probably going to be able to kill the creature without killing itself. Uh, in combat uh, and so I really like that also the 2-2 two -two buff is pretty big uh, for two mana I feel like that's very very efficient so uh, definitely like zealous strike unfortunately I will say that's probably uh, one of the better cards that we've seen so far in this pack uh, which is a little disheartening but hopefully we'll find something else awesome <laughs> Uh, fade into antiquity is two and a green for a sorcery exile target artifact or enchantment this is a really good example of another sideboard card that you would want if you were in green uh, you want access to effects like this but you don't necessarily want them main board because they may not always find a target some decks are not going to be running artifacts or enchantments uh, in which case you don't want just a dead card in your deck but uh, for decks that do run artifacts or enchantments in a limited environment, you'll want removal for them, and this is the perfect card. It's great, it's efficient, it exiles, which is really, really powerful. Uh, and so I do like this card uh, as a cyborg card for sure. Uh, unfortunately, again, not first pickable. Uh, Thorn of the Black Rose is three and a black for a 1-3 with death touch. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you become the Monarch. So here is a card that does actually bring Monarch into play. Uh, Monarch is a... I want to say that at the end step, you draw an extra card uh, or something along those lines. I should have looked this up. I do apologize. But uh, it is a really powerful ability, one that you do want uh, if you are in this limited environment. I do really like this card as well. It comes into play. It makes you the Monarch. And then it also has Death Touch, which uh, for basically the purposes of keeping the monarch seems really really useful it deters attackers because if it blocks them it will kill them no matter what on top of that uh, if you're in a more commanding position this can swing in and steal the monarch back uh, in the instance of your opponent stole it or something like that this is a good card to go ahead and swing in with because it has death touch ideally they're not going to want to trade off a creature just to keep that monarch ability so you can kind of use that to your advantage I really like this card, definitely one uh, that I would look at so far in this pack. Uh, Prey Upon is a sorcery for one green. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. This is a very classic fight card. We've seen this card a lot, actually. Uh, I want to say Innistrad might have been one of the first places we saw it, but I could be very wrong about that. Uh, but it is very good. It's efficient removal in green. Uh, you're kind of banking on just having stronger creatures or creatures with things like Death Touch that are going to be able to kill no matter what, uh, which is pretty reasonable if you are in green. So uh, I really like this card. I don't like it more than the Thorn of the Black Rose for sure, but it is very, very good. <laughs> Uh, Flame Slash is premium removal in this set, so it's a sorcery for one red and it deals four damage to target creature. Note that it is only a creature, not a player. Uh, you cannot just nug somebody for four for one mana in this set, I should say. Uh, but it is really, really powerful. I like this card quite a lot. Uh, this is uh, a removal is really important no matter what in limited, and this uh, the uh, removal that is this efficient is what I'm trying to say, is very rare to come by. So I really, really like this. I don't know if I like it more than the Thorn of the Black Rose, so I'm gonna keep them together for now, and then we'll see what we get later on. Uh, Stone Shock Giant is three and two red for a five four. Uh, this features Monstrosity three, so you can pay six and two red, and if the creature is not monstrous, you put three 1-1 one, one counters on it and it becomes monstrous. Uh, that basically means that it cannot be triggered more than once. You can technically pay for it, but it doesn't actually do anything. Uh, but uh, when it becomes monstrous, creatures without flying your opponent's control can't block this turn. Uh, so essentially this is going to be able to come in, be a 5-4 beater. Uh, hopefully in a couple turns you can monstrous it if it sticks around. Uh, and then at that point you ideally swing to win the game most likely. 
uh, if you haven't already done so. So this is basically a pretty solid bomb uh, for a red deck. Uh, five mana is really top of the curve for a red deck. You really don't want to go any higher than that, and you don't want many five drops at all. But it does provide you a mana sink late game if it does stick around, which is great. Uh, and it does just provide a way to kind of throw in some extra damage there if you can actually monster it. So definitely like this card, definitely the one I would pick so far. Uh, Illusion of Choice is one blue for an instant. You choose how each player votes this turn and then you draw a card. Uh, there are cards in this set that require uh, all players to vote. Uh, so expropriate being a good example, uh, you vote for one of two things and then effects happen based on which uh, was voted for either more often or in some instances like expropriate you get all of the votes tallied up and you do all of the things. It's kind of insane. But uh, this basically means you get to influence the decisions on the voting. I didn't like this card very much uh, playing this set. Um, I do think, you know, it's a powerful ability, but it's a little bit niche. Uh, it's not reliant on itself as much as, as it's reliant on other cards. Uh, and yes, they, I guess, can be um, on your opponent's cards. If some opponent plays a card that requires you to vote, you can actually play this in response, and then you get to decide how the voting goes, which is pretty good, but you're still banking on other cards. And in limited, I don't like to bank on multiple cards to actually get where I'm trying to be. So for that reason, not very excited. Uh, Beast Within is an instant for two and a green. Uh, destroy target permanent and its controller puts a 3-3 green beast token onto the battlefield. This is a really powerful card. We see this in a lot of constructed formats, in fact, uh, because it is removal in green, which is a little bit rare to come by. Uh, putting the 3-3 green beast token into play is a little bit more important in limited. Uh, as you're not necessarily going to be able to deal with it every single time. Ideally, you should be able to deal with it every single time. Uh, but this is nonetheless a very powerful card. Not more than Stone Shock Giant, in my opinion, uh, but definitely good. And then our rare is Birds of Paradise. Cool. So a 0-1 for one green flyer, and you can tap it to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. This is a really powerful card. So not only does... Uh, it splashed basically any color that you need it to because it does tap for any color uh, But it's also a little bit of a, it's a early threat uh, because it is a flyer You can power it up with combat tricks things like that and you can actually deal some weird damage with birds of paradise I know that sounds kind of funny, but you can uh, and so this really opens you up a little bit early on in a draft because you're able to now bank on having at least one creature around that's going to be able to produce mana for other cards so I really like this. I don't know that I like it more than Stone Shock Giant. Uh, we do, of course, have Summoner's Bond. So these are the conspiracy cards. These are specific to the set. Uh, this is Double Agenda. So uh, I might have to zoom in a little bit. I do apologize. Start the game with this conspiracy face down in the command zone and secretly name two different cards. Uh, you may return this conspiracy face up at any time and reveal the chosen names. So ideally, you're going to write these down as you draft this card. Uh, whenever you cast a creature spell with one uh, of the chosen names, you may search your library for a creature card with the other chosen name, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. This is an uncommon conspiracy. Uh, there are actually some really, really powerful conspiracies. This is an okay one, but not one that I'm super excited about. Uh, I don't think I would take it over the two options that we have here. Uh, I think honestly in limited, I would probably just take Stone Shock Giant. It's just such a big bomb for this set that it's really, really hard to pass up. Birds of Paradise, always very solid no matter what. Uh, really powerful one drop, and so I do like it quite a lot. And it might be the correct pick if I'm going to be honest, but I think I would pick Stone Shock Giant. So that is my opinion, but feel free to disagree in the comment section below. As always, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack a Pack episode.